Hello everybody and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to build a web scraper that will get you the prices of flights uh, from kayak.com um, it's a follow-up on an article that I published in um, on Medium and um, I think it sometimes uh, the, the text is not enough to um, explain certain things and I have to kind of cut some some stuff and I think it would be nice to have a, a video to uh, to help you it's kind of a code along exercise and um, so I think it's useful but I would love to hear from you if you find this useful or not I'm considering doing it for the next articles um, but if you have uh, I also have uh, an Instagram bot and, um, and some real estate scraping tool. If you find it interesting and you want me to, to post a video with it, let me know. Yep. So I'm going to use Selenium to build our web scraper for kayak.com. And uh, I can show you. We're going to scrape from um, from these prices, and right now it's loading. So we we go from a specific flight that we want, and we just uh, start scraping the prices and uh, the time of the flights and the companies and all that. So how do we do that? Um, we do it with Python and Selenium, and as you can see, I have the packages we need here. So I'm just going to import everything um, and if you don't worry don't you don't need to write everything uh, with the video uh, in the article itself there is a file with all the code if you want to um, start from there um, so we want to import uh, the Chrome driver and we need to define its path and uh, this is pretty straightforward you just replace this thing with a string of where your Chrome driver X file is located and you just add it here and over here let me just run it and over here this is where we initiate the the Chrome instance this is where uh, the tab will open the automated tab and we're gonna see that let me just explain so this is gonna be our our driver this is going to be, let's say this is our window uh, that's going to pop up anytime. And this is the command that we need to execute to open the, the, the tab. Okay, just pass this parameter here. The, the path that we defined here should be fine. I'm going to run it and it's going to open a, a window. Yep. So you can see this just opened and it says it's automated um, controlled by automated test software so it, it knows it's python that's running it let me just adjust the size here i'm gonna leave it uh, i'm gonna leave it here so our window just opened and we want to go to kayak and start to see which elements of the page we want to grab and how to do it and the way we um, fetch a URL is with the get well not fetch uh, the way we op open a web page uh, it's with get so you pass driver dot get kayak so and in the article I explain why start here it, it's basically it's easier for us if we uh, already know what search we want to do and then get the elements um, if if you get lost in the video you will always have the article and kind of vice versa I think um, so yeah let's run this and it's going to open so I just switch tabs here it is and a pop-up will probably show yes okay so this is our first challenge to close the pop-up and uh, how do we even start th 
thinking like how do we do it and it's really simple um, you just right click the button that you want to to click in the end so we want to close the pop-up so we can start inspecting the page inspecting um, so we just inspect it <laughs> right click the the close button here and when we do this we inspect it takes us to the area that this is it, it may be a little bit further to the right but we just move a little bit up until we get a button this is what we want to click and we start to see okay what's special about this button it has an ID and a class and this area label and um, the way you look at this um, you're gonna have to trust me on this one I could go ahead and say okay find me the button with ID this and click it it would work but the thing with uh, these websites and it's a way to prevent uh, a lot of scraping going on inside your website it's actually a way to make it more difficult for, for web scraping tools I don't know if it's just for that but I know it <laughs> it makes it harder for us this part here is dynamic and it's going to change so if you write your code and put this ID it does it, it will not work once you refresh the page or if you run another uh, in another day so that's why we can't uh, simply do like this so you right click it this is one method and it's not the perfect method okay you just copy xpath and I'm gonna move over to my Jupyter notebook and this is the X path f to that button. Well, this would be why do you do this? Okay, this would be my X path to that button. Now this would work. I'm not going to show it, but uh, this would work. I will show you, however the correct way to do it uh, for your code to last longer which is uh, it's going to be complicated this uh, this as you can see here this is going to be a little bit uh, <laughs> longer than the example I gave you but it it lasts longer it's um, it lasts longer and it's easier for you to revisit your code and you know it's going to keep working you don't have any specific IDs um, that will get lost if uh, if the website changes um, <clears throat> so I chose here um, to use this XPath and I'm gonna leave some resources about XPath um, it's kind of weird at first but then it kind of makes sense and I'm gonna to try to explain what this does uh, what what I'm going to do next is say a hey driver get me all the elements which have this X path uh, and uh, and then click it okay so I'm going to explain this later so we know we need an X path to pass here that will unequivocally go to that button okay <clears throat> so I'm going to show you I'm going to copy this well, actually, uh, 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 uh. yeah, let me do it like this. So I'm going to show you what happens. Okay, so I didn't click it yet. I just, I just say, hey, give me all elements that that have this X path. So it, it's a button. Who's, who's? Can I say who's with a button? Well, it's a button <laughs> and its ID contains dialog close, uh, case sensitive, and its class contains button no standard style close, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is an X path. 
and it returns seven elements. Well, actually, seven. Okay, so I have seven elements that I need to figure out what's what's this button. Is it the first? Is it the seventh? Um, how do we how do we figure that out? So it's really easy. I always say everything's easy. It's really not easy until you figure it out. Um, nope, it's not here. I if you double click, that's actually a nice trick. If you double click the the tags, it's easy to copy paste. Easier. So I just copied this. Control F or Command F if you're in the Mac. I don't know if it's command F <laughs> okay so we got nine which is different from the seven that we found here so out of those nine two are not the same X path so they are not showing up here and I I will not count with them so this is the first does it have the button okay the class is always right and dialog close. So this is our first. And I, I'm gonna highlight while I'm at it to see if it's if it's this one that shows up. Okay. So this one no not it. Does it match? Yeah. Dialog close case okay, sensitive. Okay this one doesn't have dialog close so this doesn't count so still the number three is not the number three we're still in number two this one has dialog close and it matches this this is our number three so out of the seven we just found our third and our fourth and as you see nothing highlights here so it's definitely not the button this is a 4. This would be the 5, but it's not because it's case sensitive, so this does not belong. This one is the 5th. And this one is the 6th. Okay, you see um, over here it's going to highlight. Yeah. So this is the 6th which means with Python you should probably know this <laughs> starts with zero so I need the number five this would be the sixth how do we do that it's for the sake of so we found something if we used uh, it had seven let's like ten I want a tenth element with this X path well, nope, there is no. So if you want to know if the element exists, this is a nice way to get it. So what do we do? We just click it. Uh, and I'm going to switch. Uh, actually, let me have an extra second. See, I didn't do it, it just closed, okay? So now we can start looking at the rest of the, um, of the page. And let me check this from here. Now we can see again, uh, element by element, what we want to, uh, to see. Right. Inspect get this so this is the way to do it moving on we got rid of the of the pop-up so let's see this one again this expat is really complicated the next one is really simple it's uh, to load more results and when I built the, the script um, I wanted to get as much results as I could in the 
least intensive way so I found that clicking load more in the end of the page was kind of cool and I got a lot more results from each scrape and let me show you where is it show more results so this is what I did got here and let's see if I can Oh, another cool way to do it, you can actually click this. You don't need to right click that one. And you come to the come to the space here. Just See? It's easier. Let's see. Yeah, I use the class more button. That's kind of obvious. Uh, what is the class more button? There it is. Oh, it was actually this one. Okay, so it was this one all along. I didn't see this one. So, class, more button. And I'm not going to show you again. You kind of realize, you kind of know, know how it is. Because uh, it, it's really just, this is all the work you have. Kind of mapping out the stuff. And once you figure that out, you just pass it along in the code. and the load more function is going to be something like this. So, again, defining an XPath, in this case, way simpler than this thing right here. So, you just want an element A with a class more button. Easy. So, let me demonstrate here. I'm so organized. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, okay, driver, find more results. Like here and okay. So what's in here? Because this is kind of doesn't say much. Uh, I know that I'm probably in the right place, but it would be nice to have some confirmation. That's why you use text. This is a nice method to see what's this element. Uh, one that's also. Does this work? Yeah, no. This one did work sometime. Well, the strip method works in, in other stuff. Um, but sometimes you want to know, okay, which element is this one? So I'm sure I know what I'm pressing. And once you figure it out, you just click it. Uh, I'm going to take this from here and I'm going to do it like two seconds. See, I didn't click it, and it's it's loading more results. So that's basically what we wanted. And if you want to do it again, see, starts loading, more prices. Uh, I just, throughout the code, I just loaded more uh, once. I didn't find it particularly useful to load m more results more than twice. M m well, more than once. Um, so I created this little function to load more. And in the meantime, it sleeps after it loads more. So the page has time to load and... Uh, there's no loading elements when while I start the scraping. Um, so this is a little function we're going to use later. Okay. And moving over to start kayak. So if you've read the article, you know that this is uh, kind of our starter. <laughs> and um, this is where we define uh, the city from, the city to, date start and date end. How does that translate to what we're doing here? So the, the, the start function loads a page. So this is what we did before here in the top, getting a web page. So I define the variable here and 
you kind of notice the URL type of thing that I'm doing here. If you come here, it's exactly the same structure of the URL that I use here. So, what I'm doing down there is replacing this part with my own um, search term. So, if I want to start kayak uh, looking for flights from Lisbon to Paris, I could do it with this function. If I wanted to change the cities, I, would, I could do it. If I could do different dates, it's basically in the same function. Okay, so how the function starts, it's easy. We define this variable and we define the, um, the other variables here. And we get, we get this URL that we just constructed and we sleep on it for a few time. And here starts the closing of the pop-up. Okay, and here goes load more results. And then we start to scrape. So this so far, this is kind of the main thing. Um, I'm going to show you what this does because it's more easy to demonstrate like this. Um, just a quick run through uh, what this bot, well, what this function does is basically search um, the first page that loads, we scrape it, whoops, we scrape it and we save it as a data frame and we tag it with best because, let's switch here, oh, so many, uh, okay, so right now we're looking at best because I, yes, it's uh, this tag here in the URL gets you here. But if you go to cheapest, mm, okay, if you go to cheapest, it's price A, the cheap. And this one is fastest, if I'm not mistaken. So, again, with the goal in mind to get more results, I switch, uh, I also switch it, uh, switch it. I switch it to cheap results too, here. Don't worry about this thing, I'm gonna tell you later. I switch to cheap and I scrape it. Well, actually, this is me defining um, the cheap results button. Again, really easy. Give me, give me this button somewhere. Here. Okay, somewhere around here, there's a button here. Uh, so I use this tag, uh, data code equals price. Well, it works. And um, I click it and eventually the page, the page mo moves to the cheapest results. And I do the same thing, I scrape it. And I sleep, and I switch to quickest, and I scrape that again. I, you, I commented the, the load more, but you can, you can use it, it's just to get it uh, faster. So you page, you scrape it again, and now it's time to tell, okay, uh, what's this? What's the page scrape thing? It's the function I've defined here. And uh, I'm not gonna go over all of this because it's basically the same thing that I've been showing um, above. You, kinda, you just need to get your XPath and kind of go around it and see what works, what doesn't. Um, there's some tricks here that I can probably talk about. Okay, let's see if I go over some of this in the, the next... Uh, well, 
Okay, after we do that, I'll, I will give you some examples over here. Uh, after we do that, we just create a data frame and we save it with a, with a timestamp. And we return. This, this function returns a data frame. Okay, and I had this ready. Nice. So this page is open. Let's try and scrape this thing. Hmm. I'm going to try and scrape these results. Uh, oh yeah, that could be like this. Yeah. Nope because I didn't define the function. <laughs> well, let's see if I can do that, actually. Okay, so um, I ran the cell, and nice, it's working. Okay, while it loads, um, yeah, so I don't want to get lost in a whole lot of details that are not relevant and then you guys don't even watch the whole video um, I'm just trying to see if there's any hmm. let's see if this is done oh it's done so this is the data frame that I get from the page scrape function it's cool so yeah okay I'm gonna so again <clears throat> I was telling you all about the start kayak thing until we got to some page scrape uh, page scrape the cheap so we get to the the fast uh, page scrape so page scrape in the fast results it's the last one what do I do with all the, the data frames that I got? So I got a data frame for the, the best, for the cheap, and for the fast. Now I'm going to merge, merge them, put them in an Excel file, and I'm saving it in a folder. So this way I always have an Excel file with all the scrape results each time. This is kind of cool. And you have a timestamp there, and you can see this day we got these prices, yada yada. Um, so, I also like to leave some print statements because um, once the function starts growing, it gets kind of messy to test it and kind of see where it fails, where it doesn't, what is it doing right now, because in between sleeps, you kind of don't know what it's doing. Is it still running? Is it just sleeping? Did it crash? So I add these print screens to these print statements to give me an idea what is it doing at the moment, at each moment. And I can keep back. So they have a section up here which is not showing. And I. Well, I'm going to refresh it. And I'm probably going to get a security check. Well. I didn't. If I price prediction, did they change this? Well, this always goes bad once you start recording. <laughs> Anyways, um, you can look it up in the article. Uh, I think there's a section there where they say what's the prediction and. Based on that, I also wanted to send that to my email. Uh, it's like a sentence saying, by now, the price is not likely to decrease, or uh, by later, or... Yeah, I usually see by now. I, I wonder why. Um, and then, sending to your email. And this part is really straightforward. You just have to copy-paste, uh, basically. Um, this was really easy. So, you just define the string here, your email, your password, this is the same and yeah you can change the message and this is the way I get the sentence so I get a number with average price um, the recommendation and hmm, end of message 
Uh, da, 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 da. And this sends the email. Okay. So, the page scrape. Oh man, where do I start? Uh, let me get you. Okay, let me get you the prices. Just want to give you an example and I'm going to end this video because I think it's getting way out of control. Oh, okay, prices. Uh, wow, a lot of stuff. It's, where is it? Okay, so Let's do it like this. Fancy for loop. Actually. Let me comment this out. Actually, let me. So. Prices list. Let me see what prices. Uh, no. Prices list. That's nice. What if I didn't have replace here? I'm gonna take this. Okay, it worked. So I'm gonna take this from here. Uh, in case you're wondering, this will get give me. It will get all the elements in prices, and all the elements will be called price. Um, each element here is a price and it will print price.text for each price in this element which we've seen it's a bunch of selenium stuff and this is the method I've showed you before um, with the text thing so what I'm doing here oh if I forgot about this part if the price text isn't empty I got some stuff that was empty a while ago and I had to add this so if there's no price just don't get me any price okay this is what you get and other transformations that you start doing when you build the code you add this thing I don't want the, the dollar sign here I need to replace it so okay give me price dot text and replace the dollar sign with nothing. This is the, what you get, the prices. And uh, 584, 596, 596, 584, 596, 596. <laughs> Just so you see, I'm not cheating, it's the actual prices. Um, anyways, this is, I don't know if I'm gonna leave this in the video or not, it's getting way longer than I wanted. Um, I think I'm gonna wrap this up with this last part because if I didn't cover it in the video I strongly recommend you to, to look at the article. I'm going to leave um, I'll leave a, a link for the article in the description here uh, and of course you can comment and um, ask what's What's on your mind? Uh, if you have any comments or, or questions about the code. City from, city to, date start and date end. This is a suggestion um, of a cell that you can use for each of your searches. So let's say this cell is for Lisbon to Singapore. Liz Singapore cell and you have it here. You just run it and it runs your code. Okay. Anyways, Lisbon, Singapore, these dates, 
and this is a simple for loop that starts the kayak thing prints when it finishes the, for the, the iteration and it waits for hours well here I s changed this to 0 0.1 because I was testing uh, and then I interrupted that's why you see this here oh no actually this I, I okay uh, this one I run the test and I did not declare the right uh, credentials anyways uh, yeah, I need to say this later so again you, you see this is so simple you just start a function inside this function it's all you need there's a page scrape there's a load results there's a best and the fastest and whatever and the sending the email and saving the excel file this is really simple and you just run it five times and you wait for hours in between okay so uh, just something that I don't think I was really clear about it this thing these variables are strings okay you need to define this I use this like that because I defined um, in another cell way down below all my passwords and emails and whatever uh, hmm yeah this is important for that part to work and what was the other one yeah I think that's it if I do remember I'll write something below um, yeah I mean I know I didn't cover a lot of this stuff but uh, I did write, write it in the article so uh, throughout the video I didn't think it was relevant um, but do let me know what you think uh, I can actually start this of course I didn't define start function this is a great way to finish the video <laughs> didn't even define that function and page scrape to okay so yeah this will run and it will print the results uh, if you get to some um, if you get to a security check uh, security check kind of a capture thing just solve it manually it will go away because uh, if you don't overload the server with a lot of requests um, it shouldn't be blocked and if you solve it manually you should be okay for for well until it shows up again uh, it's like a few days delayed I didn't if you solve it manually you should be fine um, that's it let me know in the comments what's going on uh, did you like it was it useful or not and uh, yeah that's it thanks for watching